welcome to us engine uh, tutorial episode 33 in uh, episode 32 we talk about how to use us engine to do and uh, supervise clarification in this video i'm going to show you step by step how to do accuracy assessment um, after you uh, do the supervised clarification and um, let's get started so um, first of all you need to install the uh, gmap package uh, if you have not done this before you can follow the installation section here the instructions uh, to install the package and after that you can go to the examples folder notebooks and uh, download uh, jupyter notebooks number 33 accuracy assessment so click the lower button and then right click save folder and then hit save okay so and then you can open um, your uh, file explorer here and also open your terminal so after you install the package then you can um, use uh, get into the downloads folder and then you can contact activate the email Jupyter notebook then we can open the notebook on the browser okay so then you should be able to open the Jupyter notebook so let's go through uh, step by step um so first um if you have not watched the uh, previous episode on how to do supervised clarification you can uh, follow the tu uh, the previous one um and then come back to this tutorial but i'm going to go through uh, some of the source code here again just to show you quickly how to do supervised clarification using random forest uh, algorithm and then show you how to do accuracy assessment for example how to compute the overall uh, overall accuracy how to compute uh, the commission error and uh, omission error or uh, producers accuracy and uh, consumers accuracy so this goes through the source code step by step uh, first uh, you need to import the libraries and then we can create the interactive map so in here in this example i'm going to show you how to generate uh, uh, training data with class labels so essentially if you want to do supervised clarification you need to have the satellite imagery but you also need to have class label so you have some sample points with a uh, specific each point has an attribute uh, showing you which uh, class the that, that point uh, belongs to and since i don't have those uh, points collected uh, in the field survey i i'm going to use a uh, national land cover database so um, let me just show you what it looks like for example this is the national land cover database for the us 2016 and uh, it's for the national scale so you can zoom in you can zoom out and uh, it's color kind of represent one specific land cover type next i'm also going to show you because if you have the data land cover data then this data set uh, was generated based on land set data so uh, we might want to know for example which land set data set was used to generate for example for uh, this data so you can open the um i have a, a, a access here that you can access uh, so basically this is the metadata i'm going to show you here if you look at this one so for the entire us it was subdividing uh, subdivide it into uh, small pieces so each piece represents um one uh, you can say it's one tile so it's similar to a lens set like one image by one image and if you use the inspector here and then if you click for example in this location uh, near chicago and you will show you here okay lane cover type so the lane cover is from the first image uh, class 22 and um, the metadata shows you for example because this is lens set 2016 uh, NLCD 2016 so if you see from this one here 2016 uh, on and that means it's leave on so this is how this uh, which image was used to generate this uh, lens cover database so you will lens set 8 2016 
and 256 is the date day of year so roughly this is in somehow september right because uh if every month we have 30 days eight months we have 224 right two uh, 240 and then with 16 right you have 256 so it'll be mid september and so you can do this one for the any way you like okay so this is just an example to show you how to create our training data with class label so i'm going to use a point here near chicago right so this is the point and then uh, you can either click here to see this one uh, or you don't have to uh, i can use the uh, the metadata to filter by point and then we can get the geometry so i'm going to show you in here uh, since this is the location near the uh, Chicago and once you have the geometry I can get the 2016 so the, the idea about this one is to get what date uh, of the satellite image was used and you can take a look right length 8 2016 to 56 so that's the one I showed you earlier and then you can use this one to um basically we want to get this number 2016 256 and then run this one after that we can convert this one from day of year to year months and date and then if you see this one um this looks very tedious and complicated it's not um the reason i'm using this word is to that you can specify here any location longitude latitude in the us and everything else is automatic okay I don't use manually input otherwise um, you need to change a lot of source code uh, if you want to uh, use other location you only need to change this one once everything else remain the same you can still get the results okay so now we know it's september 12th and so we're going to actually filter the image collection by date so this will be the starting date and the end day we're going to advance by one day so you'll be uh, the starting date will be September uh, 12th and the end date will be September uh, 13th and then we can use this one to filter the image collection okay so the entire lens uh, surface reflectance filter by this point and also filter by date and then select the first image select the first uh, spectral bands and then I do the clipping clip to the reason so the reason is from here from the uh, metadata so basically it's one single uh, polygon okay and then let's execute and take a look so now we have this uh, lens set data right and so this will be the original data we, we're going to use for supervised uh, classification and then we can also uh, clip the uh, NLCD 2016 so this will be the um, data set we use to create class labels because we um assume that if in in reality you might not have this image but you can go out to the field to collect data right and then click one point one point and then you can assign a class label so we're just going to use this one uh pretend that uh we have the points generate this from this image so um before we can do that um we need to go through um to reclassify the map because the nlcd um the class values uh, is not from um starting from zero i'm going to show you here if you execute this line so these are the class values like 11 12 12 uh, uh 22 so if you like you can go to the nlcd uh from here you can take a look at the band and from here it's color it's represent for example 11 represent open water 12 represent um, um, uh, snow and ice 21 represent open space so each value represent one lane cover uh, type and in order to do accuracy assessment uh, in earth engine you need to reclassify these uh, values from uh, to con uh, consecutive uh, integers so starting from zero all the way to whatever number of classes you have so from zero one two three four something like that so basically we need to reclassify this imagery um, to consecutive integers so how can we do that um, so we grab how many the total number of classes and then we gener generate a list and then get the new value okay so from now we can convert this one from zero all the way to 19 so we have a total of 20 classes 
and then we can still use the same uh, lane cover palette so keep it in mind this comes from here uh, from the lane set data uh, nlcd uh, you have a lane cover class name lane cover class uh, palette and lane cover class values okay so let's do this and so this is the color will be the same now we are, we are trying to reclassify you can use the remap function okay so this will be the, the list of original uh, lane cover values and this will be the new one so from this one to this one and then once you do the remap you will have a new uh, band uh, name remap so we can change the uh, the name to lane cover just to be consistent and after that you can do the map you can add the map again so now these two maps this is the map that we um we, we use you can use the inspector here for example click uh, and then you can you might not see it so the lens original like seven spectral bands and now we have the lane cover class three so three basically is uh, the class uh, if you look at this one here, 3 corresponds to 22, so it will be um, developed area. Okay, so now we have the um, lane set data that we can use to do classification. We also have the NLCD that we can use to uh, generate class labels. So now let's make the training data. So how do we make the training data? is the we we're going to generate for example five thousand points randomly and um let's execute this one so you can pass in the reason so the reason that means we're only going to generate the random samples within this polygon so all we need to do one and these are the points we can see from here all right so using the points um and each point right now we basically grab the value from the nlcd right and you can take a look at this one for example how many points five thousand right the first point we just look at like what information is contained within the point so if you see from this one it has the location longitude and latitude it also has an attribute called lane cover and then number three right so if you see from here basically these points are generated based on the nlcd right based on this image and then we generate five thousand random points and we grab the value of each point beneath uh, the lane LCD. Once we have these points, then we can uh, split the points because if you want to do uh, accuracy assessment, we always need to have training and testing or training and uh, validation. So we right now we have five thousand points, right? We can um, um, use the points to grab the value from those uh, seven spectral lane set uh, bands. And then we can add another column called random column uh, to create random values. And then we can split uh, the 5,000 points into 70% and 30%. So 70% we're going to use for training and 30% we're going to use for testing or validation. So if you look at this one, now earlier we only have the value like the, the class label. So now if we use these uh, sample reasons, we are going to generate data also with the seven spectral bands that we can use as the predictor so this will be the outcome variables and we also need the uh, predictor variables so once we execute this one and let's take a look at for example the first point if you see from now uh, in here so we have the properties now from b1 so this will be the dm values uh, digital number uh, b1 all the way to b7 right and we also have the class label so this is exactly what we need right because when we want to do image classification uh, using machine learning you need to have this to a as the predictor right and then this is the outcome variable right so you, if the spectral bands values follow the pattern like this it's most likely to be lane cover number three and also we, we create a random column right with the value point uh 18 so because we use this one so the, we generate the value uh we, we with this line of code is going to generate a new column with values ranging from zero all the way to one right uh, and then it's uniform distribution so if you have five thousand points um uh, use a split threshold of 0 0.7 so um, most of 70 percent of the points are going to be uh, uh 
uh, low, lower than uh, 0.7 and 30% of the points are going to be larger than uh, 0.7 so in this way we split the data into training and testing and uh, so if you like we can click this one one what's in the validation so this is with what we expect right so if you, you within the validation data set uh, the point the random value is going to be larger than 0.7 okay so once we have the training and testing data set then we can use this one to do uh, classification if you see from here there's only one line of code that you need to um, to run so e dot classifier so in this case we're going to use the random forest so the random forest uh, this only one variable we need to pass in so this is the the number of trees you can uh, press shift and tap on your keyboard to if you want to see uh, what information you want to uh, um, specify okay so the first one is the training and the label okay so basically this is the training data set right and the label is class label is the length cover column and the bands is the band one to band uh, seven so this would be the predictor variable this would be the outcome variable and once you train the classifier we can pass the classifier into here the classify function to do classification so and then add the map uh, using a random color so let's take a quick look and this is the uh, quick result right so from the original lens data now we have this one okay but as you can see uh, the color is like a random color uh, we can change the color if we want so all we need to do is that uh, we can set the property called length cover uh, class values because this is from 0 all the way to 19 and we can get the length cover class palette from the original uh, NLCD right so if you see from this one and then we can uh, set the property because uh, this is the, the variable name stored in this image okay and we can set the two properties uh, called class classification because uh, the band of this image is called classification right and then all we need to do is just to pass in underscore class values and then because this is from 0 to 19 and then change the color to uh, using this uh, palette and then we can add this one to the map so now you see the color is the same as the original NLCD right so if you see from here from the training to this one so this will be the outcome of uh, the result uh, the final result if you want you can change the color for example the opacity so if you execute this line and then if you say this one from here or i need to uncheck this one so from the original lens set right and this is what we um just did and this will be basically the image classification uh, result right pretty nice um it's only a couple minutes right so uh you can do this one for any location you just need to change the point location and anywhere uh within the us you should be able to do that if you want to compare this one to the original uh, nlcd data right it's, it's 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 similar it's not exactly the same um it's going to be a bit noisy compared to the original uh, nlcd because uh, we're just doing for testing so it's not going to be perfect but um, just to show you how to do that okay so once we have the result um, you can add the legend uh, to the map if you want okay so I'm going to add the legend out here now you can maximize and then from here you can quickly see for example is is color represent what okay red color represent the urban area developed area and uh, this one here the uh, represent uh, agriculture something like that okay so once we have the map we have the result now we need to do accuracy assessment so how do we do accuracy assessment uh, is to use the function called confusion matrix so this one is applied on the classifier so this just execute this one and if you execute the classifier you get the training accuracy right and this is what it's so called the confusion matrix uh, and 0 all the way to 19 right we have 20 classes so the diagonal line is the those uh, uh, predicted correctly okay so 280 uh, the first class is uh, open water so um, and this is the overall we want, might want to calculate the overall accuracy so all we need to do 
uh, is the training accuracy dog accuracy and then don't get info you get the overall accuracy so overall basically the diagonal uh, the sum uh, of all those numbers in the diagonal line divided by the total of all the numbers so 95 percent that means the training accuracy is pretty high uh, because we generate 5,000 points and 70 percent of those points are uh, being used for training so we have uh, 3,500 points and 95 percent of those are predicted correctly you can also calculate the uh, car power coefficient so it will range from zero to one um the higher the better you can look at the description in here uh to see what does that mean also we can calculate the producer's accuracy and also uh, consumer's accuracy so the producer's accuracy basically is um a complement to the omission error right so if you see from here omission error um the producer's accuracy here for the first class so this one is water 99 percent up to nine how this one was calculated so basically this using this uh this row right and 280 that means one total number of two pixels were incorrectly classified as other classes and so if you two divided by 280 total of uh, 282 um you will get the uh, uh omission error so omission error one minus the omission error you will get the producer's accuracy so let me see if you can open a calculator let me show you exactly what this one in here so for example two two um divided divided by 282 like right, 0.007 all right so if you one minus 0.007 you get 0.99 um to something okay so this is the producer's accuracy the consumer's accuracy is a uh, complement to the um commission error so similarly it's using this one this uh the first uh column okay so you'll be two one two two so it'd be uh seven two eighty seven so seven divided by two eighty seven and then one minus that number you get this one so this is so called the consumer uh accuracy if you see through here like some of those are pretty high and some numbers are pretty low uh depends on uh, your area and depends on the data set you use if you get zero that means uh, this the class is not uh existing within this uh, uh image okay so this is for the training data set uh you see here the accuracy is pretty high uh, all 90 above 90 percent next um, let's do the testing validation so again you need to classify the validation data set because uh we only use the training data set to do classification and we also need to classify the uh, validation data set so we can take a look at this one once we do the classification now you can also see we have two columns right classification uh, is the prediction and the length cover this is the reference data okay and now we can use this so-called error matrix error matrix uh, to do to calculate the uh, accuracy so we take the get info uh, we are going to get on um, confusion matrix similar to what we did earlier right so now this is the one that what we get uh, again similarly uh, we can calculate the overall accuracy uh, the diagonal line the summation of all the numbers divided by the sum of, of all the uh, numbers and let's see what's the accuracy uh, it's going to be lower than the training data set because um, this is normal so it's 0 0.71 that means uh, the accuracy is 71 uh, percent um, much lower than the 95 percent uh, this is within our expectation and also we can calculate the kappa coefficient uh, the higher the better uh, the cost one uh, is better so 50 percent um it's uh, it's an okay number and similarly we can do uh, calculate the producer's accuracy and also the consumer's uh, accuracy and if you see from here the water classification is pretty high 
but for other classes some are pretty low okay uh, this is just for demonstration so it is by no means is going to be in an accurate uh, classification and similarly consumer's accuracy so as you can see from here um, essentially if you want to do accuracy assessment you can uh, for the training data you can use the confusing matrix and for the validation data you can use these uh, error matrix and passing the two columns uh, just follow this tutorial and then you can change the data set to uh, whatever data set you want to use and next i'm going to show you how to download the data okay so if you see the confusing matrix sometimes you might this uh, to, you might need this to uh, include in your report or your publication so it's desirable to download the data so what we need you just uh, set the file pass and then you can use this one to download the data to your uh, computer so you just hit one and then you can open your um, um, downloads folder so you will generate two files under the user downloads folder and then you better double click and then you will see here okay so this is what you get it's the same uh, confusing matrix uh, that we saw earlier and similarly you can also open the test accuracy Right, and then open then you can add a uh, uh, column and row headers if you need okay so this will be the confusion matrix for the training and uh, testing data set lastly i'm going to show you uh, how to reclassify the map right because earlier we in order to do the accuracy assessment we need to reclassify the uh, map from to consecutive uh, integers uh, from 0 all the way to 19 but if we want to be consistent with the NLCD then we can right now convert it back to 11 uh, starting from 11 so let me show you in here then cover then cover the color is still going to be the same but now the values uh, is um, follow this one 11 12 or something like that so if I click inspector if I hit this one you might need to maximize to see the, uh, there's too many uh, pixels anyway so this is how you can reclassify the data uh, and then to make it consistent with the NLCD data set okay lastly you can export the results right so I'm going to export this one you can either export to your local computer so this is the final link cover variable that we created right this variable and set the file name or the scale is the spatial resolution so i'm setting to the original one is 30 meter i mean setting 900 just to make it much faster so that you can uh, take a look at the data quickly so now we have this one right yeah, and then you can use uh, you can open the data in uh, any software you like uh, qgs or arcgs or any uh, gs uh, software right and then you can drag and drop this one so now you have the data okay starting from 21 uh, you can also export this one to your google drive okay um but you need to check your google earth engine account in order to uh, download the data okay so that's all for this tutorial if you enjoyed this video please uh, consider hitting the like button and subscribe to my channel you can also leave comments down below hope to see you in my next uh, video take care bye bye